Hey guys, it's me Greg. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing one that lots of you guys have been asking for. Yes, if you've been around on my channel for any period of time, you will know that I've been super, super positive about my experiences here in Sweden. I've talked about all of the things that I love, all the things that I enjoy, but I also accept that, you know, nowhere is perfect and there's always things that could be better. And I've got the impression that's something you guys would like me to talk about. So a bit of a disclaimer before we get started, if you guys are here for content about how great Sweden is and how much I enjoy being here, this might not be the video for you. Maybe to check out one of my others because today I'm going to be talking about the things I struggle with or have struggled with since I've been here in Sweden. That being said, here's five of the things that I struggle with since I moved to Sweden. First thing I'm going to mention today is something that I've touched upon in different ways here on this channel, but I've never explicitly said, and it's what I'm going to call the stay at home culture. And of course, this is a generalization. It kind of has to be because I've not met every Swede in the country, but from the people I meet and the friends that I've got and the people I see at work, there seems to be a real move towards spending a lot of time at home at the weekends. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm all about quality time, but something that I really miss that I used to do a lot of back when I was in the UK is getting out and about and making the most of the countryside around me at the weekends. I hear lots of people here talking about spending the weekends at home doing odd jobs or hanging out with family and there is nothing wrong with that I'm totally here for it but something that I really miss is you know getting in the car driving for an hour visiting a new town visiting a new city going to the beach it just doesn't seem to be what's really done here and of course there's going to be exceptions and of course there's going to be jobs that you have to do at the weekend but in England at least we're taught that the weekend is for making the most of it getting out doing something different I don't want to always run in you know my back garden or have fika in my house I want to go an hour away and do it somewhere else totally different and I get that maybe this is seasonal as well because the winters mean that a lot of your time is spent inside at home but I'm just really used to spending much more of my time out and about and exploring and I don't really get that feeling as much anymore which brings me on to my second thing which I think is one of the reasons for this type of stay-at-home culture that I'm talking about yes the second thing I struggle with in Sweden is that I don't feel like there's so many activities to do as there would be in the UK and I know what you're probably thinking Greg you can get out and about on a bike you can canoe you can surf what's your problem and I'm not talking about you know pastime and hobbies I'm talking about the type of organized events and activities that you find in the places and cities that I'm used to one thing we have to remember here is the population in the UK is of course over six times more than in Sweden and it really shows when it comes to what opportunities you have to do things at the weekends what I'm talking about here is in the UK around every corner you're gonna find a bowling alley you're gonna find a bar you're gonna find an escape room there's always something to do whereas it doesn't really feel like you have that same experience here in Sweden Sweden, unless you're in Gothenburg or in Stockholm. Obviously we need to exclude the three biggest cities here because they don't really have a fair comparison point. But if you look at any of the other top 10, lots of them only have a certain number of cafes, a certain number of nightclubs, a certain number of bars. The opportunities for entertainment are just a lot smaller because there's a lot less people. And again, I have no problem with that, but I just feel like I'm at that age and at that point in my life where I want to be getting out and about and having more opportunities and more things to go and explore. One day, this will suit me so much better, but right now, not really there. And that brings me on to my third and actually biggest struggle when it comes to living in Sweden, and that is the winter. And you guys, before you judge me, just hear me out with this one. I'm not talking about how cold it gets or the fact it snows. None of that causes me a problem. What causes me a problem is how dark it gets and how short the days become. And most of all, the fact that in November and December, you barely ever see the sun. And I know I've probably got some of you laughing now because you're like, well, you can talk. You come from the UK. It's not exactly the sunbelt of the world. And no, it's not. But one thing you really notice when you first arrive in Sweden is that when you get to the heart of the winter it can get very dark the days can get very short and you barely ever see any blue sky I'm not being unrealistic here I don't expect it to be bright sunshine and 30 degrees I know what I'm working with but when it's overcast and cloudy all of the time I struggle with it. I know last year wasn't an average year for a number of different reasons, but when you're stuck at home all of the time because you can't go anywhere because of a pandemic, and then there were two hours of sunlight in November across a whole month, that is tough. One thing I've not been able to adapt to quite so well is how difficult it is to find an apartment in Sweden. Yes, my fourth struggle is the housing crunch. Every big city that you go to in Sweden is packed out with people. There's a huge queue of people waiting for apartments. It's impossible to move. Naively, before I moved, I thought it was going to be super simple to find somewhere to live. There's not that many people in Sweden. It can't be that hard, right? 
wrong, the opposite is true. I remember in the six months before moving, I was walking down some of the streets in my local town, looking at different apartment buildings, saying, oh, I quite like to live there, or that place could be nice, not realizing you don't just get to pick. Because in England, there's so many different apartments available for all different types of budget, you can almost always find something that you want. In Sweden, that wasn't the case. And I have to level with you, it's particularly difficult when you first arrive in Sweden, because you have no pusher number and you're still trying to file for residency, but you need all of those things sorted and able to get somewhere to live. I remember I actually found my first two apartments here in Sweden on Blocket because it was impossible to find somewhere to live. Every single place I applied to had a queue and the queue was several years long. Yeah, most of the cities have this point system where you earn a point for every day you're in the queue and you need so many points before you can actually apply to go and live in one of these buildings. And that's something I really struggle with. The fact that I can't just pick and choose where I want to live, but instead I have to put myself in a queue and wait several years. And that brings me on to the fifth and final thing that I struggle with here in Sweden, and that is finding a job. Okay, well, it's not the job market itself that I have this complaint about. It's the way that the education system works. Yes, in England, when it comes to going to university, you pick a subject that you really enjoyed at school and you go off and educate yourself in that. And people are much more interested afterwards in what grade you got rather than what degree it was in, unless you want to be a lawyer or a doctor or some rocket scientist. Whereas here in Sweden, they have a vast array of different specialist programs for all different types of jobs. Yes, I recently found out there's even a specific program you can go on to become a librarian. And don't get me wrong, I think it's brilliant for people that really know what they want to do. You want to be a teacher? Take the teaching program. You want to be a scientist? Take the biology program. No problem at all. But what about for the rest of us that haven't really decided what they wanted to do when they were 12? Take me for example. When I finished school in the UK, I really enjoyed geography. So I took a human geography degree to continue that line of study. Then I went into project management, which has nothing to do on paper with geography, but of course has a lot of transferable skills. And that was no problem for me at all because all the employer was looking for was that I had the right level of understanding comprehension to be able to do the job. Whereas here in Sweden, I've struggled a bit more. And that's not to say that I haven't had some great experiences working here in Sweden. I've worked for some brilliant companies who have really seen my potential based on the skills I have rather than the program I chose to do when I was 18. As I say, being so specific works for some people who are very sure and certain about what they want to do. But for those people that are like me, I think it makes it a bit more tough. And it's definitely something I've struggled with since I arrived here. There you have it, guys. There are five of the things that I struggled with since I arrived here in Sweden. I've been very open on this channel about the fact that I really love living in Sweden. I think there's some really great things about it, but that doesn't mean that everything's been perfect for me 100% of the time. And they're five of the things that have really stuck out for me during that period. But I'd love to hear what you think. Do you agree with the things I've struggled with? Are there other things that you've struggled with either here or if you've moved to another country? You've got to let me know in the comments below and then please drop me a like so I know that you liked this video and maybe I'll do another one like this in the future. If you haven't subscribed yet, it'd be really awesome if you could. Turn on that notification bell, then you'll be the first person to know every time I put out a new video and that would be really cool so that I know you're there ready to watch it. Uh, and I guess that's all I've got to say for today. So uh, all I'll say now is I hope you have a great day, whatever else you've got planned, and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Catch you later, guys.